Hey guys, Arsene here. So today we're reviewing the GTX 1070 by Gigabyte. To be precise, the GTX 1070 Windforce OC. So as you all know, it's a Pascal architecture uh, card uh, based on the GP104 uh, core with this uh, fin uh, 16 nanometer FinFAT uh, process with 1920 CUDA cores, 120 texture units, 64 uh, ROPs, uh, uh, 256-bit uh, bus and 8 gigabytes of GDDR5, not GDDR5X. And uh, it supports all the NVIDIA technologies like Gameworks, Ansel, VRWorks, SMP and many others as G-Sync and all the rest that they invented but honestly, do we care about this right now? No, because what do we care? Of course, what does it look like? And so uh, it looks like, unfortunately it doesn't have a backplate, but uh, it has a nice black PCB, which is fairly clean. And uh, it's cooled by two copper heat pipes that do direct contact with the, P uh, with the core, and a fairly la large fin stack that covers memory and VRM. So the cooling is uh, pretty good, and it's cooled by two 90mm fans. The black plastic trout is matte and uh, the, it has small orange accents which are pretty much invisible in the case when it's uh, face down. So it, for me it blends in perfectly with my black and white build which is mostly black. So and it's, uh, it's powered by a single 8 pin which makes uh, actually cable management much nicer and I think only having one cable go, uh, go down is way easier to make, uh, make look good than having two or three. <laughs> well, of course, which card has three? Uh, while I like the overall design, I really have to ask why does why Gigabyte thinks it's a good idea to extend the plastic shroud two centimeters past the PCB. It just uh, makes the card feel cheap because plastic is plastic overall. And so the card is not really heavy because it's power efficient so it doesn't need to get cooled that, uh, that much. In the end it gives it a cheap feel and even worse is that because uh, the shroud extends so far you don't really have a uh, spot to take the card when you're pulling it in and out of the case. Of course this is not a problem that a lot of people will face but I faced it and so I'm talking about it. Um, plus was the, why I was uh, what I was wondering about is wh why are there no LEDs? We're living in the age of RGB and uh, the logo is not even backlit. That was kind of a shock for me. But in the end, what it comes down to is performance. And uh, as for overclocking, well, GPU Boost 3.0 made overclocking a bit uh, well a bit trickier than uh, it usually would be with an AMD card, which is what I'm used to. So by pushing just the power sliders all the way to the right, and the key, uh, I saw the card hit on, uh, boosting on its own to, to the 1900s, even though the advertised boost clock in OC mode, which is what I'm running it in, is uh, 1771. But of course it will boost way past that without, without a big problem. And I additionally put in a quick and dirty manual overclock of uh, plus 110 on the core and 150 on the memory. And I saw it hitting uh, uh, 2011 uh, megahertz on the core. Which is actually pretty good for a 5 minute quick and dirty overclock uh, without touching the voltage. And I think most of you should be able to hit uh, 2 gigahertz and probably even more. Because I think if I would sit down and uh, start uh, tweaking the voltage and everything, I would be able to get it past uh, 2.1. But uh, I didn't do it for this for this video. I just wanted it to be stable and not have to test it for hours and hours on end. So, if you're interested on how I do my benchmarks, then just uh, check out the video in the top right corner. There I explain everything and uh, why I choose which settings and everything else. So enjoyed benchmarks.
to uh, see it. It's uh, it's a pretty nice card, and it never went above 77C, and because uh, and it's really powerful. At 1080p, I uh, we see some CPU bottlenecks. Uh, uh, where game the FPS in games between uh, 1080 and 1440 is pretty much non-existent. So at this point, uh, <laughs> you have to ask yourself, uh, well, do I really need this card if I'm only playing at 1080p? Because at 1080p, this card is pretty much overkill, and it's uh, right at home at maxing out 1440p games. And in my opinion, it's also extremely capable in 4K. Especially if you bump down uh, the presets by one notch from ultra or very high to high and turn off anti-aliasing, you're gonna be perfect. Uh, for example, I play on a 27 inch uh, 4K monitor uh, which has a PPI of 160 and at that point it's really hard to see pixels. So uh, anti-aliasing is really not needed so I think uh, it's really capable at 4K. A single card 4K, that's amazing. Plus, uh, if we think about it, now the only thing I'm left wishing is if this, if Nvidia would support FreeSync. But I don't think this is coming anytime soon. Plus, uh, uh, this card, at 450 euro that I bought it, and I think it's all about 450 US. It's probably the best, uh, the best bang for the buck you're gonna get. I didn't see any cards under it in Europe, plus the Founders Edition in Europe is 499 euros. Yes guys, you in the US, you might complain about pricing, but pricing overseas is much worse. So we're happy with 450 euros. And at this point, I can only recommend to, uh, to buy this card, even with design flaws. I think these are the trade-offs, plus it's all black and if you, it's pretty understated. So, and in that case, it's pretty, it will uh, most likely fit into any color scheme. So, with this, Arsene, signing out.